Hey, that's that's a dope intro. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. <clears throat> I was over here like amazed by the intro. Oh, I'm just I'm working on it. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. So yeah, I love that. Live, we are live. I am super excited because I am launching a brand new podcast called Uncomfortable Truths. Mm-hmm. And you hit me up weeks ago saying, "Hey, e, I want to interview you." And yeah, I was like, and I wasn't clicking into what I was agreeing to. I'm like, sure, Jason, you know, you're always welcome. Like, yeah, let's do this. Yeah. And I said, we'll do it on the new show. It'll be great. And I wasn't thinking, mm-hmm. it didn't click to me that you said, I want to interview you. <laughs> oh, I have to be vulnerable. Um, So I'm excited. I'm excited. So this is the premiere of Uncomfortable Truths. And the premise of this particular show is I accept my truth. It may be uncomfortable for you or even my own myself, because but that's my truth. And I fully believe that there is really no right or wrong. I believe in respect and understanding. My truth is my truth. You can hate me for it if you want to. You can cancel me. But that's my truth and that's yours. How we feel, no one should take that away from you. Um, you should be able to express that willingly and fully at all times, but don't tell me that I'm wrong unless I have no understanding or respect for your viewpoint. That's not in everything, of course, but that's my overall feel for it. So, but before we get started, you know, let's introduce you and who you are. Oh, I was ready to get right into the questions too. Too excited. You're too excited. I know. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm Jason Phillips. First of all, E, thank you for, you know, having me here. You know, I, I love when we get a chance to chop it up and the conversations are always rich, but it's always real. Okay. You know what I mean? So yeah. that's why I was, I was excited about this. No. But yeah, introducing me, I'm Jason Phillips. I'm a therapist, life coach, and I'm here to interview Elise on on your show, so that's I, you know, because I'm usually being interviewed. So yeah, I have you in the hot seat. <laughs> hot seat, of course, of course. So let's jump right out the gate. And if people have questions, y'all can put them in the. Uh, I guess you can put them in the chat section. Yes, they can. We'll be able to post the chat questions as well for those who are listening after the fact. Uh, this is a live stream right now on Facebook and on YouTube. And we'll be going through, uh, I'll be getting interrogated. And um, as we we'll post questions or have comments, we'll try to, of course, read those out and share them. So, Jason, I am ready whenever you are. So, let's just start just off the gate. What does vulnerability mean to you? Um, vulnerability means to me. It's a scary feeling. It's a scary place. It's totally open. You're open for hurt. You're open for disappointment. You're open for, um, it's to me, it's at your weakest state. And not saying weak is a bad thing, but at your weakest state. I've, um, I tend not to be too vulnerable all the time for various reasons. And um, to me, when I'm, what vulnerability just means, it's not that you're out of control, but you're totally raw. Okay. Okay. And everything I heard you say as far as is is scary. It, it, you can you gotta be weak, you got to be open. So is vulnerability a bad thing? No, of course not. I encourage it. It doesn't mean I practice it, but I encourage it quite a bit. Okay. I think you have to be vulnerable to be open to all possibilities. It's just that hurt that comes that that you're open to. You know, to me, vulnerability is total truth, total transparency, total everything. And what comes with that, when you give someone the gift of your vulnerability, what happens with that is scary to me. So answer this then. Tell me about a time when vulnerability worked out for you let's start with the, when did it work out for you it worked out for me mostly in my um career 
Okay. Being open to changes and being open to allowing someone to guide me and see something more in me than I saw in myself. Mm-hmm. And letting go of the controlling reins of I got this. It's like whatever you need me to do. Even though I am that way to a point where if I trust someone, I'm like, what you need me to do? I trust you. I'm in your hands. Um, it's worked out for me, work, career. So career-wise, it's been beneficial. Yeah. yeah. When has being vulnerable not worked out for you? Oh, that's what I'm <laughs> Relationships, romantic relationships. Okay, how so? I I need an example. I need a specific example. (laughs) We get we get Um, right to it. Um, for me, the few times that I've totally opened myself up to someone, Mm -hmm. they have totally just destroyed me and hurt me. Well, I won't say destroy because I'm still I'm still walking and breathing, but they totally hurt me. So do you feel like if you weren't that vulnerable, then the outcome wouldn't have been as as bad? It would have changed the outcome. I wouldn't have been so vested to where because the outcome's gonna happen no matter what. You know, those things are already written to happen. But I wouldn't have cared. So let me ask you this thing. When it comes to that specific situation, do you regret being so vulnerable? Yes. Mm. Absolutely. So how do you so how will you do in the future? I've tried really hard to practice what I say and not carry that into anything brand new. You know, okay. um, so I take time to heal and I make sure that I am a, I approach things with a clear mind and not thinking this is going to be exactly the same. But I do have reservations. I do hold back a little bit more and more. I'm naturally, you know, tough love, caregiving, kind of caretaker, loving person. People may not know that, but I am in the roughest kind of way. And um, I I just totally hate that I can't be that fully because someone took advantage of it. Mm. You know, and it bothers me because I know that someone else may not get all that good (laughs) at the beginning or you know whatever moment it has because I've been torn apart the sad thing is you feel it and you know it's coming so I'm like I can't believe this I cannot believe I trust my gut my intuition I trust I don't do more heart than gut I'm I'm good with that and I feel it so when I recognize it and I'm like, this is happening. And it depends on the person. It depends on where who is coming from. You know, if you know, but and what I mean by that is if I've opened myself up to you and I've given you, I've given you me fully, you know my history, you know who I am, I've let you in. And people who know me, they know I don't let anyone in. I let you in and I've been vulnerable and you, and you shit on it. I don't blame them though. So, E, so it sounds like being vulnerable led to being hurt. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And now you said in the future, you're not sure how vulnerable you're going to be. I'm trying. I, I, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I really don't know. Um, Let's take it back. Who taught you how to be vulnerable? My mom. Mm, How so? My mom, you know, my mother was the one who showed me and I felt it and I saw it. Total love. (laughs) 
Take your time, Ree. <laughs> Take your time. Um, and um, she taught me love and strength and openness. And I am who I am because of her. I can tell you that. This, the sassy, the attitude, the sweetness is because of her. But she also didn't shelter me from the realities of relationships and the world. So I knew very young about those things. I knew very young how to manage and navigate my feelings and not to place them in the wrong bucket, if that makes any sense, you know? But I also saw my mom be vulnerable and saw her be left behind and be taken advantage of, be it her career or family. And it grew an anger and a frustration in me that I said, oh, this ain't going to be me. Mm. You know, I have to, I have to show her that I'm not going, because she told me, don't be this, don't be this, don't be that. So that's, you know, why I am the way I am. Yeah, I, I can see where that could be kind of like an internal conflict because on one hand, of course, you aspire to be like your mom and, and your mom showed you so much love and she showed you how vulnerability can be amazing. But then on the flip side, you saw her, it sounds like you saw her got uh, taken advantage of. Not, the no, not like in a bad way. My, my mom and dad, are, you know, they were fine. It's just the fact of, I know she was a giving person, a loving person. And so, you know, I just saw her give and give and give to either family or friends. And then those same family and friends just took advantage. Mm-hmm. It hardened me in, in many areas, you know? So. so how do you, cause that's pretty deep. How do you heal from that? How do you recover? Lots of drinking and therapy. No. Um, <laughs> Um, I recovered. I'm not recovered. I will never be recovered. Um, I just take it one day at a time, you know. So I don't know how you recover from that. You just have to. I had to realize that I can no longer carry her hurt and trauma and what she went through in life blessed is i'm blessed we're all blessed all of us all the siblings are blessed knowing our mother's upbringing and what she went through in life she never really put that on us in that way but we were fully aware (laughs) we were fully aware of those experiences and so i had to tell myself that's her experiences so i cannot let that flow through my own life if that makes any sense i can't do that no that makes perfect sense and i see uh shanice commented there is strength for sure in vulnerability yeah i don't know where the comments are popping up at uh so let let me know if you see them e yes sir i will <laughs> uh, was there anybody or any experience outside of the one you said before that really showed you or taught you early on not to be vulnerable Um, what do you, so you're asking me what now? Cause you said your mom showed you how, but did, did you see anybody else where they kind of said, well, don't be vulnerable. Like how, you know, to no. kind of stay. Okay. So you didn't have no. that. No, I was so much younger than my siblings and I grew up observing a lot of things. So I think I did it to myself mostly. I really feel I did it to myself about that, about being vulnerable and just saying, I can't, I can't expose that. I can't be too nice. I can't be too giving. I can't, I can't. And if I am learn how to cut it off real quick. Yeah. And I think it takes a lot of courage to be vulnerable. Like even, even coming on here, I mean, now you're in, you know, I'm interviewing you, but you have, how many shows do you have? You have about 50 shows. (laughs) You got a lot of shows. You got a lot of shows. And even though you are the interviewer, mm-hmm. it seems that you are always sharing some part of you 
during the show. And, and when, when I say that, it's not surface level, which is why I think so many people tune in, they can actually connect like, okay, E is really, she is here. She's not putting on a facade. You know, this is like who she really is to her core. I, I, I believe that it's not fair to ask someone to share a part of themselves, be it their career, their achievements, their ups and downs, and not be willing to empathize and sympathize completely with them. Because I have experiences and I may, you know, some people call me like a lockbox where I'm mysterious. I don't really talk about them. I'm pretty private individual, but I don't mind sharing certain things knowing that it may help someone in some kind of way. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not fair to just take and take and take and never give. I'm going to give. I'm not going to just take from you and hoard information. I can't stand. Biggest pet peeve is when I meet people who always want to take from you mm -hmm. and they're gathering information and they're taking, 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 and then gave you nothing, or they may give you advice, but you're not connecting with me. That's why I try to make everything where it's like, you feel like you're at home with me. I cooked you a nice hot meal. We're having drinks and we're talking yeah. and I try not to pass judgment because I learned a long time ago. You cannot use the word never. Listen, we're all going to be through something in some kind of way. And right now in 2020, I think it's really showing us we've all experienced something. You can't say, well, you're not that person or you are that person, you know? So I try not to do that and not be too vulnerable while doing it. But I have my moments where I curl up and cry. I'm having a hard time right now. This is it's a hard time of the year for me. So <laughs> you, you making it. E. Um, so let me ask you this, as you say that, you know, using never, is there ever a time where you should not be vulnerable? No, I just think you know need to know how to manage it because vulnerability births over emotion. You can be overly emotional. And I'm, it's not nothing wrong with being overly emotional, but this is my this is my truth. I feel you need to manage it because you never really know what ear is picking up what you're saying and how they're going to use it. I, I, that may sound like I'm thinking the world's against me, but you have to be mindful and not change who you are, but you have to be mindful of how am I taking this information right now and how will I give information? Because everything's not personal, you know what I mean? So you have to pick and choose those moments to take down the wall a little bit, to share a little bit of something because that may bring clarity for someone, you know, if I'm answering your question correctly. No, you're answering it. Um, but I think that's, I'm going to go back about 20, 30 seconds. You said everything is not personal. Uh-huh. But that's hard for people to conceptualize. I mean, even myself at times, it things feel personal. Um, I don't take everything personally unless I, unless I know it's personal. Like, it's really hard for me um, to carry your frustration that you put upon me and I didn't do anything to you. Mm -hmm. And it's really hard for me to help you if you don't tell me you need some help. So if you're walking around frustrated, and and what I mean by that is taking it personal, if right now my mom passed away, it'll be six years next month on the 16th. So mm -hmm. I go through these moments of reliving every day up until those days around August, September, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm raw from this time on, okay? Used to be, oh, reflection of the end of the year. Now when she's, now it's like, okay, thinking about the countdown of this. And we, as I can remember everything we did up until that time. So if someone's talking to me, how dare I take my rawness and make you feel bad when that you have no idea what I'm going through. Right. So it's up to me to either share that or hold on to it. Right. So I have to pick and choose 
how I expose that, how I share that. Like if you and I are talking and I may tell you, hey, Jason, because, you know, we, we communicate. Right. I can't right now because and I know that I'm safe in that space with you. You have to read your safety and you have to also realize everyone's not privy to your vulnerability. Everyone should not have that gift because everyone doesn't know what to do with it or use it the right way. If that makes any sense. If I answer your question. That makes a lot. So a lot of sense. You said a lot. I want to back up again because now it's <laughs> like there's levels to vulnerability. Yeah. And in your career, you said it's worked out mm-hmm. great. Yes. So in relationships now, how do you approach these different levels? Because I think a lot of people struggle with that. Like, how much do I open up? How much do I share? What do I keep to myself? When do I disclose things? Especially when it comes to, you know, intimate relationships. I, I really feel that you have to, there's some things you have to disclose and it shouldn't be private. You shouldn't be ashamed of it. This is not a shame thing. Mm-hmm. This is just, is this person I'm communicating with, do they need this information so they can heal or understand you better? And also, will this person be a part of my life? Or do I want them a part of my life so they can fully understand who I am? It's unfair to never share anything and have all these ripples of trauma and nonsense and never share with them the heartache or the journey that got you to that place. That's just unfair. So I'm a firm firm believer in sharing little by little as you communicate, if that makes sense. So work-wise, work to me should be separate from personal. Unless personally is spilling over, then you find someone your bot look, I'm going through something. They don't need the details, but I need this time. You can't just hold things in. People can't read your mind, but you have to be able to manage the vulnerability and the emotions that come with it. I hope that makes sense. It makes perfect. But how did you get confident enough to get to that place? Because I was a mean ass growing up. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I, I kept to myself. I'm very introverted. And I just told myself, I can't let that be me. When I saw other people get hurt and just be too raw, be too exposed, I just, and it's not the right way to do things. I just didn't want it to be me. But I also, for some reason, I don't know why people like talking to me and, and uh, communicating with me. And so um, taking other people's stories and I treat them as my own. So, you know, I always tell people, you're safe with me. It's like, it's, it's a lockbox. If you tell me, now it's my business. So I've made it to where I try to help other people just by listening and realizing that if I'm listening to other people, I have to be able to share as well. So if you, okay, let's get to this. E, how old are you? <laughs> really, Jason? <laughs> you said uncomfortable truth, so we got to- I am 40 something something. Okay. I'm 42. I'm 42. What would you, what would you tell your 22 year old self? Oh, okay. I would I would tell 22 year old me, um, go back to school right now. Work is not important. Mm-hmm. Um, I would tell 22 year old 22 year old me, you should have never said yes to that engagement. Mm-hmm. I would say to that person, I'm giving you three years to not get involved with that person. Don't do it. Don't go to New Orleans, child. Don't go there. And if you do go, leave them people alone. (laughs) (laughs) But I also probably wouldn't say anything because I have to honestly say, Jason, I take everything that I've been through in life as a true chapter and a true learning experience. And I really would not be who I am right now if I didn't go through those things, honestly. Yeah. I realized I've never really been in love until one time in my life. I realized that um, all of that was not love. Um, I realized that I didn't know how to date. <laughs> I was in relationships and I'm like, how did, I, when did we agree? I don't understand. When did this happen? I realized that as outspoken as I am, I'm really not that outspoken. And I tend to not speak up for myself when I should. And I made those changes very recently in life. 
So I probably wouldn't tell 22 year old me anything. Mm-hmm. Only thing I would probably tell her would be keep on enjoying life. Don't settle down. Enjoy these twenties and save your money. Yeah. And I see uh, Jocelyn said you are warm and inviting. So y'all, if y'all have other questions too, I can definitely see them when they pop up on the screen. Uh-huh. Um, I'll post them. Yeah, post them. What I was going to say, E, you know, it's hard to, because, you know, our friendship, you seem always like you're super vulnerable. Okay. So can, you, can you take it up a notch or are you as vulnerable as you're going to be? I can take it up a notch. I just don't think anybody wants to hear what I have to say. In all honesty, in all honesty, I honestly do not think anyone wants to hear about what I'm going through. But it's real. I mean, so many of us going through the same stuff. Um, Yeah, but no, because I'm the youngest of four. Mm -hmm. So I've been over talked all my life. My family's Mm -hmm. loud. They're from the Caribbean. They talk, they loud, whatever. And they all did their own thing. And um, there's like a big age gap from all of us. So I tend to really sit back and watch. I, I really sit back and I only speak when I have to. And when I say it, you know, I say what I have to say. You know what I mean? But it can go more. I don't think anybody wants to hear that story, though. Shanice said, we, we might get into that. She said, you you said you recently changed. Yeah, what prompted those changes? Um, When... Uh, when I was hurt. Yeah. 2019 opened my eyes. I, I, I count my life. Um, the day after my mom passed away is a whole new birth of a person. Mm-hmm. So I count things um, that way. And so I became vulnerable. I opened myself up. And um, when that hurt happened, I had to reevaluate things. And then I told myself, you know, I can't be mad. I can't be angry. It's really my own fault. You know, we all have to realize that take ownership for your hurt. Take ownership in when things happen to you, what part you played in it. That doesn't work for everything. So don't say I'm not, it's not, I don't be black and white. I'm real. Like, take ownership. I felt it coming. I saw it coming. I knew it wasn't right. So why am I still vexed? I can't be mad at someone. I gave willingly. They took advantage. What is what it is. My bad. I learned better. Hopefully, I'll do better next time. So I had to take that. Everything in my life added up to a change. I had to adjust. I've been adjusting. Every day of my life, every day of my life, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, um, my mom died last year, so that's one thing we have in common. And I know, we, you know, we do look at life differently after that. Mm-hmm. After that, you know, things change, your perspective changes. Um, so I can, I can, um, I can relate to you and empathize with you on that. Yes. But you, but you seem like you have mustered up a lot of courage to to keep going. I have to because listen, I got nieces and nephews and god babies. I have to leave a legacy behind for these kids. They expensive, and <laughs> um, <laughs> and my mom prayed too hard. Okay. My mom prayed too hard for me before I got here and after I got here for me to walk around and 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 mess around with my blessing, whatever you believe or not. My faith and my spirituality is grounded. I know my mother prayed really hard for me and I have no choice but to succeed. I can't crawl into a ball. You know, I didn't grieve like everyone else grieved. I didn't get a chance to because I've always been the strong child. I've always been, you know, my nickname is Lisa. I don't tell many people that, but you know, so my nickname is Lisa. So I was like, you know, Lisa, you got it. You know, you know, Lisa have it. She got it. So I never had a chance to be vulnerable openly. So I have to take it and do it in doses. So I have to just, you know, suck it up, do what I have to do. You know what I mean? And um, realize there's no time to curl up in the ball because I'm a black woman in this world and I don't have time to sit back and cry and and not push through 
but I will, re- I do address my issues and take those wellness times and check myself. I went to therapy mm-hmm. and, you know, did what I had to do. But um, yeah, I just, I don't know. I just think I'm built a little bit different. Yeah. I mean, you take ownership for a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, other people we can blame. Uh, yeah. But I want to get to Jocelyn's question because I see it. What is the best facet of your vulnerability? That's a good question. Golly, Jocelyn, really? That's what you're doing today? <laughs> um, that I am able to navigate it, I think. I am able to be vulnerable, yet not lose myself. I'm able to be vulnerable and... I've learned that just because I'm vulnerable with this person, they may not treat it the right way. And I can't be mad about that. I can't turn off and go into a ball behind it. Yeah. And it's much more healing for me to be vulnerable than anyone else because I let it go. I've, I used to hold on to so much stuff. What I would hold on to so much. My own personal hurt and frustration. And it was manifesting itself in my body. I used to get migraines weight was you know the weight was ridiculous more than it is now i used to grind my teeth when i slept at night you know and i was like that from a child just holding on to everyone else's frustration and, and anger and um i had to release it so i may talk to my I walk around my house talking to myself mm-hmm. um podcasting has helped listening to other people's stories i have a great network of best friends we've been friends 30 years plus that we talked to and we have our moments and we had a good event session at my house a few weeks ago. And I've realized that I am loved and I am cared for. Cause I used to tell people all the time, you know, my mom, I will never know a love. Like I knew my mom's love, like mm-hmm. love of my life. So there's no one who's going to love me like that. I still feel that way till this day, but you know, it's like, I know that no one's going to love me that way, but I had to realize I am loved and cared for. And I have to utilize those network of people and the tools that I've learned to manage myself pretty well. Yeah. I mean, you're doing a real, real good job. I see Shanice comment. um, She said she admired you so much. You're truly real. I can't see the rest, but I mean, that's something that I noticed off the rip. Like you, you know, you're down to earth, fun, loving, you come with energy. Yeah. And she takes ownership. So a lot of things that you described, though, I feel like that your listeners can relate to that. The stress, so. the migraines, uh, the bottling things up. When did you get to a point where you were like, you know what, this is too much. Let me do something about this. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Like, what was the what was the turning point? When I had to tell myself enough is enough. So what happened? To make you tell yourself that I was in a, um, I was twenty something, living in New Orleans. Since we're going to be totally honest and truthful and transparent, <laughs> and uh, my relationship there turned extremely toxic. I hate that word toxic, mm-hmm. but it was bad. It was bad. Make it worse. My mom and my family did not want me to move away because you know we're from the crib and you don't just up and leave. You know you still ask permission. Like, you know, and the funny thing is, before I go there, I realized a long time ago, the hold also my mom had on all of us and how we truly cared. And she really like had her hand in everything and she wanted her hand in everything. You know what I mean? And um, I realized that a lot of my relationships, my first engagement, she picked him. You know, cause I mean, she know best, so she picked him. You know, mama knows and best. Then, huh? Yeah, they say mama knows best, right? And she still, she's you know, I still talk to her about it. But um, I realized that I was doing everything based off of what people's going to think. So the benefit living out of tech out of Texas was I went somewhere no one knew me, and I can just be genuinely who Earlene is, right? And that was early on in my 20s. I'm like, okay, no one knows me. When they meet me, they're meeting me. They're not like, oh, you so-and-so sister, you so-and-so daughter. You know, my last name is unique. So there ain't many of us running around, right? Mm -hmm. So I had that turning point in life when I realized when I left home, officially left the state, 
I said, okay, I am my own woman. I make my own journey. I make my own decisions. So that's where that came. But I was in a relationship no one liked. And it ended up being the worst thing to do. You know what I mean? Because it was abusive. It got abusive. And that's when I left. But I, I left. I didn't stick around. I'm not, not, not knocking anyone. But when it got there, I'm like, oh, I, you lost your mind. So before one of us end up in jail, which probably be me because you're going to die, let me go ahead and go. <laughs> let me let me end this. I wasn't raised this way. This is not my frame of reference. I don't know what this is. So let me just go ahead and go. And that's what I did. And that right there was the moment of realizing you can be open, you can be vulnerable, you can be all those things. But I also have to take ownership and know when to pluck myself out of it and not fall into it, into a hole thinking, I've okay, that's all there is to life, if that makes any sense. No, it makes again, it, it does. Um, Nicole said, I love this therapy session, says come through vulnerability. <laughs> it, you, you always give it to us real raw, um, yeah. and speak to the point, too. I told you, I had to. I mean, you asked, I, you know, I can't have this show and not be that way, right? You know, yeah. <laughs> it's the last time I'll be in this hot seat. How about that? <laughs> right. <laughs> so I asked you what would you what would you say to your younger self? And pretty much you said like nothing. You accepting you, you love who you are. Mm-hmm. If the younger self were looking at you today, right? What would that conversation look like? I think she would be amazed and shocked. You know, I never thought I would be doing what I'm doing at all and not worrying about, oh, you're too old to do that. You know, I took myself off of that checklist and time list a long time ago. Like, I must be this by this time and I must be that by this time. And I stopped comparing myself to other people a long time ago. It's more I admire other people's accomplishments even more so than I you know, even like, oh my God, it's amazing. I love it. Okay, teach me. You know, um, I think the younger me will be really proud of the woman that I have become and I'm still becoming. You know, I think that uh she'll be happy to see that. She'll be happy to say, Okay, okay, girl, look at you. Okay. I like that. But I'll be afraid for her to see it because she may not do it because there's a lot of hurt. That led up to this. <laughs> uh, another question from Jocelyn. What uh-huh. is the one thing you would tell your nieces and your nephews about vulnerability? I will tell I would tell them my youngest niece, because she's only like 19 months right now. All the other ones are old as dirt. No, just again. Um, <laughs> I would tell them to first learn how to manage your emotions. And know that no one owes you anything. No one owes you their time, their heart, their anything. And no one, it first starts with you. So once you know how you feel and who you are as a young person, and you're not ashamed of that, and you're able to communicate your feelings, it's okay to be vulnerable because it's not a bad thing to be vulnerable. As long as you know who you are as a young woman and young man, it's just a part of who you are. When you say one, I like what you said, it all starts with you. Mm-hmm. But then you said no one owes you anything. What does that mean? You know, people are very entitled. You know, like, how dare you be entitled? Like, I don't owe you. I don't have to. The biggest thing is I don't have to. And that's the beginning of the sense. I don't have to. And I may be very blunt with it. I can be much more blunt than I am now, Jason. Really? Uh, <laughs> oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Very that's, that's hard. You know, cut. Like it would cut. I used to be able, I would cut you with some words, not in a negative way, but I would say it and, and I'm done. But what I mean by that is <clears throat> no one owes you anything. No matter what, we all deserve something. So your feelings are not above anyone else's, you know? And also just don't take, be able to give as well. And I think a lot of us, the arrogance that we walk around with is we feel we we, we deserve it. Why shouldn't you? 
when you meet someone, they don't have to give you their heart on day one. They don't have to give you anything on day one. And what's the point? What have you shown them for them to give you anything? That's a friendship. That's anything. So, Erlene, you're dropping a lot of just wisdom about life in general. I ain't going to remember any of this stuff later on. But yeah, that's that old brain. That's that 42 year old brain. You have to watch it. <laughs> But 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 seriously, how do you how do you remember or how do you put all of this stuff that you you know you live your life by? How do you put that into daily practice every day? Like how do you, how does it come to you? I don't really know, Jason. I really don't. I just really um I don't I really can't tell you how I do it day by day. You know. I really can't tell you. I can only say that I'm so hard on myself to succeed and do well, but whatever I think well is, that it keeps me going. Mm -hmm. And once I start doing something, I do not want to uh, disappoint. And that's not saying I'm worried about disappointing myself, but it's like everyone is coming after me. You know, I don't want to disappoint. I don't want to start something and half ass it or not put my all into it. And I have to know how to manage who I am as a person and realize that we're all living life and we're all going to go through it. I'm not the only person to lose someone or a parent or a mother or a father. 2020, I have friends right now who have lost someone every month in 2020. You know, I, I, and so I, ha I know that we're all going to experience it. And if I haven't, I understand what you're going through. It may not be my truth, but I understand it. So I don't hold my feelings above anyone else's. And that's how I navigate my life. I, I try to be really fair. Um, in Caleb's group, he has a, a, a wellness group on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And someone made oh, a yeah. that's, I, lo I love his group. I love his group. Um, and someone made a post about, you know, take your take your wellness check and take your time and take take care of you. And I said, that's good to an extent, but I plan out my wellness, my, my mental wellness days. You know, I plan mm -hmm. out these things because I'm not the only one who needs it. So how dare I hoard time away from work and family because I need this time when they're going through it, too. So how unfair is it to my team or my family to just go into a hole when I can when I can manage it right now? What I mean, some people can't. I understand. Manage it. I understand. You know, you're I gotta right. clarify because folks will come at you crazy saying, yeah. you, "I ain't got time." That's what I mean by that selfishness. I ain't talking about yeah. you. Um, but how dare I hoard that and not communicate? I'm struggling. Mm -hmm. So I try to manage the best that I can. Until I have those breaks that I take just to sit in my house by myself or in my bed and just eat ice cream, just chill popcorn, out. chill out, <laughs> and take that time to heal who I am. You know, I believe in being fair because life is happening for all of us. And how dare I be selfish and think it's only happening to me? That's not right. Yeah, I feel like you do a great job as far as taking breaks and practicing self care. Cause you oh, always I take a break, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> you always come with the, you always come with the energy. Um, right. As far as being hard on yourself, was that something that you did, or did you feel pressure from a younger age? Um, I'm going to speak my sister's truth for a second. She'll kill me later, <laughs> but you know. The, the age gap amongst all of us, there's four of us. My yeah. brother and I, the oldest brother and I, we're 20 years apart. Wow. Right. And we get along fabulously, actually, now. And then my other two siblings, the other brother and my sister, they're, they're a year apart. Mm -hmm. But they're eight years and seven years apart from me. And so I had older parents. Mm -hmm. and um, But also I had siblings that weren't as easy as other siblings, right? You mm -hmm. had my older brother who went off to the military and was like, I'm out the house military. And knowing my mom was attached and wanted to know, it's like, I need to do my own thing. Great guy, you know, whatever. I love my brother. Got married, didn't tell her, say, hey, 
I married Ma. I'm like, what are you doing? So I'm mm. hearing all these things happening. And then my sister was doing her own thing, giving my mom hell. And, you know, as parents, older parents back in the day, they were harder on their girls, like a tighter reign. You know, I need to manage you and see what you're doing. So I'm seeing all my siblings give my mom hell, what hell was for us. I'm like, first of all, I don't want her laying a hand on me. So I never got a spanking or anything like that. People don't believe it because I didn't want to. So I was a natural observer. So I'm like, I can't. I can't do what these kids are doing because they crazy. <laughs> Our mom is crazy. Y'all acting the plum ass out here in these streets. It can't be me. So let me pay attention to the big picture <laughs> and not do any of this. You or if I do it, it you're going to find out I'm doing it. How about that? So that's what I did. I just, um, I paid attention to everything and I tried to just navigate life a little bit differently. Mm. I hope I answered your question. So. You did. You did. You always do. So what would your mom say to you right now? Oh, she would love this. <laughs> oh, my gosh. She would love it. She would love all of this. Yeah. You know, that was my cheerleader. You know, that's my roadie. That was, you know, my mom would probably be in the studio with me, like sitting there, like watching everything and talking to you and talking to everyone. You know, she would yeah. love this. She would love. It. Now, the funny thing is, my dad has no idea what I do. Really? Still? He doesn't. He, I have <laughs> no. He knows I. You know he knows I'm a. You know he knows my day job, but he has right, no right. idea I do this. And I don't know why I haven't told him, but he doesn't. You gotta he be honest. No Let him know. He's. But my dad's always been semi detached. He was like the kind of person. My dad is like. He talked to my mom. What's going on with the kids? <laughs> he would check in with her. So it's never been something for me to say, hey, daddy, this is what I'm doing. Because he won't understand. He has no emotions. He's like, yeah. all right, you know, but then he'll brag about it to all his friends. Look what look what my child is doing. But I need to tell him at some point in time. So um what was I gonna ask you? So where are we at? Okay, so we still got some time. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm, I'm not gonna grill you know that much. Longer. You can grill me, Jason. I'm giving you free range to grill me. Have but at I, it. What would or what do you hope for your vulnerability in the future to bring to you? I hope it will bring. Um, I hope it will help someone else. You know, my story changes. <laughs> Or I add to my story every year of my life as I experience things. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm damn near 50. You, you just made 40. Thank you. <laughs> I'll, I'll be 43 this year. You're so sweet. <laughs> but, you know, I just hope my missteps and my, uh, my choices just help some other people at some point in time. And they see it as, I'm not trying to you know, I don't like a lot of attention. I don't like all that kind of, I don't want to be the spotlight. People may not believe that, but I'm not trying to be the spotlight. But I hope that with everything, it just helps someone else. Like doing this, am I helping someone? Am I, am I giving someone what they need, either be it knowing who you are? I've referred people to you, you know, or another show or whatever it is. How is what I'm doing helping someone? Even when my day job, helping someone with books and resources who may not have a computer at home or who may not have a job that looking for something. How am I helping? How am I using all of my experiences, my education, be it book or life education? How am I helping someone else? You know, we all have a voice and we all can't do the exact same thing. So you have to figure out where am I in life? And what do I do or how can I help with the skills that I have? You know, everyone's fight in the battle is different. I may not be on that front line, but I'm able to get do something else for you. You know, that's, I think, the biggest battle amongst so many of us. We try to um, do the same thing when it's not your, it ain't your ministry. Mm. You know, that's not my, I'm not, I can't sell you anything. I'm not a salesman. So that's my ministry. You know, yeah. you, I will be broke and I will be starving because I can't sell a thing. You know what I mean? But, that, but that's real. You know, so you have to know once you, that's why I, going back to what you asked me about talking to my nieces or the younger self, or what I tell them, learn who you are. Unfortunately, the way the world is right now, try not to learn who you are 
publicly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because, you know, I been, I had the benefit of not having to deal with social media and learning who I am and stumbling and falling and making those missteps, you know. So learn who you are so you can walk through life and not feel judged or worry about it and not and not care because you know your truth. You know who you are and listen, you're going to walk in it. So let me walk in my truth and so be it. You know, so much judgment in this world comes from people who internally are judging themselves. You pass judgment on other people. Ask yourself, why am I judging you? And look at yourself because I'm, I don't feel confident in myself to do what I do. Mm -hmm. You don't have to agree with it, but why are you, why are you worried about it? Well, like I see a post or something, if I don't agree with it, you know what I do? I scroll on by. Why am I commenting? It's not bothering me. Or I just unfriend them because I think they're ridiculous. Let me just unfriend this person. But, but that reminds me of what you said earlier about people don't owe you anything. I don't owe you nothing. They nothing. don't. Oh. They don't. But unfortunately, when if you depend on someone else for so much in life, you think you think either you're obligated or people owe you because you hold the keys. You know, at my job, my boss loves to say, we're not gatekeep. We're not going to be like policing or gatekeepers or something. We have we are an information source. So give the information. We're a hub. So they want something you give it. They need a computer, need a book. Don't give them roadblocks just to give them a roadblock. Be be giving of the information because it's going to help someone else, you know. So, e, um, I've I want to say personally, I've learned a lot from you. Okay, um, you you given me a lot. You know, you refer numerous clients, numerous people to be, you know, on their podcast. Um, also, just learning to be a better human, be real, be raw, uh, be yourself, mm -hmm. be unique. Yes. And yeah, so I, and also, you know, when you when we did that first show, y'all had drinks on the set. You was and you was mad about it. I'm, I know. And I was sitting over here with my water. I was like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, they really about to have fun. Let me just let me tell you something. Yeah. I shall never forgive drinks again on the set. How about that? Oh okay, yeah, but but you know, honestly, I think I, I've enjoyed being able to interview you. This has been an experience, I think, for the listeners, too, for sure, for yourself. I hope so. What would you say would be the main thing that you want people to take away from this episode? That to never interview me. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> um, I just think I ramble. I don't, know, I don't know if I make any sense at all. That's why I don't talk a lot about myself, because I don't think it's put together. Um. It didn't prepare me at all for this interview. So just you it comfortable truth. So we just Yeah, run. I see. Who you set the tone. Um <laughs> I, I would want people to take away from this episode. One, no matter how old or young you are, get to know who you are, man or woman, doesn't matter. Really think within yourself who you are and recognize where your pain is coming from and how you project that pain or how you come across to other people. I'm not saying that they matter or you should care, but if you are holding on to uncomfortableness in being truly who you are, you need to recognize why that is. And also you can't open up to everybody just freely like that because everyone's not going to uh, cherish and appreciate that particular gift of who you are. Yeah. That's real E. I appreciate it. Um, everybody who's listening here, I'll give you a round of applause. You made it through. You, you made, made it through. Oh, I made it through or they made it through. We all made it through. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so we definitely have to do this again. Um, I'll find I'll some guests for you to interview. Yeah, I'll let you close it out, E. I appreciate you. <laughs> I'll let you find I'll bring some guests for you to interview. You ain't interviewing me. Forget that. <laughs> I want to say thank you, everyone, for tuning in who's watching live on YouTube and Facebook. I will have this show um, up and running on all major platforms probably later on tonight. Thank you for Jocelyn, Nicole. Uh, Nicole has her own podcast, The Diamond Lounge. Um, uh, Keenan, 
Kaylin, Mr. Rooster, Shanice, thank you so much. Someone else commented by the, and Samuel, who's in the other chat. Everyone, thank you so much. I can't shout all of you out. Thank you for tuning in. This is the new show called Uncomfortable Truths. As you can see, it is um, hopefully much more raw and interesting than anything that I've done before. If you want to come on the show, you got to be your true, authentic self and be willing to answer questions <laughs> transparently and honestly. Um, I appreciate all of you so much for support, and we'll talk to you later. Bye.